Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, in Christ, if I can get it out. Uh, we're talking about our next study video about um, why the December 25th, Christmas, why December 25th. I'm going to grab some scripture real quick. But like I said, some of these studies, it's kind of hard to go to the Bible when the Bible doesn't back it. Okay. So scriptures, when well, we're going to go through some of this stuff, so some of the stuff I'm going to read real quick is going to apply to this. Um, Exodus 20, so if you want to have your King James Bible out, I'm a King James Bible believer. So Exodus 20, uh, verse 3. Okay, remember you can always pause and then turn, pause and then turn. I'm just going to do it real quick. I opened this up and was going to, but I want to keep this not a long video. So Exodus 23, thou shalt have no other gods before me. It's a command from God. Uh, Deuteronomy 5, 7, if you want to turn there. Thou shalt not have none other gods before me. Um, 1 Kings 14, 9, But hast done evil above all that were before thee, for thou hast gone and made thee other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger, and hast cast me behind thy back. Second uh, Chronicles 7, 19, But if ye turn away and forsake my statues and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Right? Why am I saying this? We're going to look into a couple things of what December 25th is about, truly about. Okay? Um, when we did the word study, we found out that the only two things it's really related to is the Catholic Mass. And when I did this study, when we get through it, Brother and Sister Christ, it all falls together and comes into place. Uh, the Catholic Mass, uh, like I said, you can do the Mass, mass any time of the year. But there's something special about the Mass that's done at this time of the year. Okay? Like I said, a lot of things get changed to get the people to accept it. But you go back to the origins of the what's so important about the Catholic Mass that's done on December 25th. Um, the summer solstice. Okay, when we looked at the definitions, words, when it was first brought into being, what was being truly being um, done on that day uh, for Christmas. So I had to do these. Uh, so let's talk about the birth of Jesus Christ first. Is the 25th, people will mock absolute truth. I've heard people do this. Jesus wasn't born December 25th. We know that, so what? Really? Why are you mocking absolute truth? Okay. If you want to turn to Luke 2, verse 8, I'll turn there too. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. We'll go to 7. Um, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And... There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. By night. Okay. Um, that time of the year, that season, it was too cold for them to be out there. They'd be in the barns. They'd have the sheep inside at night. Okay. So they, they had them outside, so we know it wasn't December. Now, can I tell you the exact day of Jesus' birth? No. God doesn't tell us, and I believe there's a reason for it. Because okay. uh, God did not ordain that you're supposed to only remember and read about Jesus' birth once a year on a specific day. Okay. So, this being said, we know it's not Jesus' birthday because we're talking about why December 25th. Okay, Can you sit down and decide, you know, December 25th, God put it on my heart. I'm going to read about the birth of Jesus Christ, study about it, give God glory in it. Absolutely. Okay, but to say it has to be done, or December 25th, it's one of the days you should do it every year. You know what I'm saying? Making it a special holy day when God does not, God's the one who deems what's a holy day and what's not. Man deems what's a holiday and what's not. Okay, you can do it any time of the year, and you're supposed to do it throughout the year. You know, it's a good thing to read about Jesus' birth, his virgin birth, his lowly and meek birth birth. So let's get to the 25th. Some people will say summer solstice. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at the scientific side real quick because I was reading this and found it very interesting. The scientific side of the summer solstice. Mm -hmm. Do you know that there is actually 
I say summer, there's a summer solstice and there's a winter solstice, okay? Two times a year. What is this? The, uh, the summer solstice is, uh, okay, there's two movements during the year when the path of the sun in the sky is farthest north and northern hemisphere, June 22nd and 20, June 20 uh, or 22nd. There's a little time period there where the days kind of shift a little bit. Or farthest south and the southern hemisphere, December 21st through the 22nd. Has to do with the sun coming up. And the best way, for, I'm going to read it real quick, but to sum it up is during the uh, summer solstice, it's the day where the sun stays out the longest. Uh, winter solstice, it stays out not as much, not as long. It's the, the day that's the shortest day, if you want to say. We count days sometimes just when the sun's up. Um, the short, as far as the time of the day, that back then they didn't have electricity. Men uh, and women, when it got dark, uh, they would have a little fireplace to heat up the house and the fire would go out overnight to keep the house warm as they went to sleep. They might stay up a little bit after it's dark, but for the most part, you didn't hang out at dark, out at dark and party hard and everything like we do today. Like we, like Baba believing God fearing men and women, but I'm talking about the lost world like I used to. Uh, you'd go to bed. So it was the they kind of went the shortest day of the year because there wasn't much of the day where you could get out and do work or do anything. All right. So at the summer solstice, the sun travels the longest path through the sky, and that day therefore has the most daylight. According to the ast astronomical definition of the seasons, the summer solstice also marks the beginning of summer. I'm not saying that's 100% truth. I'm just reading what the summer solstice is based off of. This is just, what I mean by scientific, I mean these are facts. They see something, and you can see something and pervert it, okay? God set up the seasons and designed things a certain way. Right? At the winter solstice, the sun travels the shortest path through the sky, and that day, therefore, has the least daylight. According to the astronomical definition of the season, the winter solstice also marks the beginning of the winter, right? So that's the fact of it. That's the physical why that time of the year um, uh, there's the summer solstice. And as you notice, I said December 21st or 22nd. We're going to get to why summer solstice is being related to December 25th. We're going to get to that. But right now I'm just showing what the summer solstice is and what the dates are supposed to be. Right. So the pagan side, the winter solstice is the day where there's is, we've read this, the shortest time between the sun rising and the sun setting. Um, it happens on December 21st through the 22nd, and we'll get to why it has to do with the 25th, because at first I started the study, I'm like, well, honestly, the summer solstice really doesn't have anything to do with the 25th, but then I found out it does. Okay. To pagans, this meant that the winter was over and spring was coming, uh, I'm sorry, the spring was coming and they had a festival to celebrate it and worship the sun for winning over the darkness of winter. Okay, summer solstice. Um, in Scandinavia and some other parts of Northern Europe, the winter solstice is known as Yule and is where we get Yule logs from. In Eastern Europe, the midwinter festival is called Koledo. Okay. Uh, still, as we're getting into this, I, I'm going to jump ahead and tell you it's all about sun worship. Okay. It's about the sun. Uh, in China, um, uh, I can't remember. The, I can't pronounce the word, but it's a word that has to do with the winter solstice. is celebrated on the winter solstice by families getting together and eating special festive foods. So, um, remember, I'm going to keep saying this probably a few times through the study. I did a study on um, high places or church buildings. And one of the things how he got them to celebrate in high places when they're supposed to be given their doing their get the, get them to do their sacrifices in high places versus going to Jerusalem, the temple where they're supposed to, is the king of the eleven tribes, other than the tribe of Judah. Uh, he didn't want them going back to the tribe of Judah and their king. And how did he keep them away from Jerusalem? Get them to turn on God's command that that's where you do your sacrifices, you know, your offerings. Festival, food, entertainment. Okay. Um, until the 16th century, the winter months were a, were a time of fathom, famine in northern Europe. 
Most cattle were slaughtered so that they would that they wouldn't have to be fed during the winter, making the solstice a time when fresh meat was plentiful. Food. Okay. Most celebrations of the winter solstice in Europe involved merriment and feasting. In pre-Christian uh, Scandinavia, the Feast of Jule, or Yule, like Yuletide, is another word that they use for Christmas. When you find out we did the um, meaning of Christmas, Yuletide is the um, summer solstice. Last, it lasts for 12 days, celebrating the rebirth of the sun and giving rise to the custom of burning a Yule log. Okay. The sun comes out. And it goes down the shortest time. It's a celebration for the shortest time. It's a celebration when it's out all day. Okay. There's a time when the sun is out. Okay. In ancient Rome, okay, the winter solstice was celebrated at the feast of Saturnalia. You know, Saturn. To honor Saturn, the god of agricultural bounty. Lasting about a week, Saturnalia was characterized by feasting debauchery, and gift giving. Let that one sink in. That's going to be another study about that we're going to do with the Christmas tree. The next day will be the Christmas tree and gift giving. Where did that come from? Is it biblical? Does it have anything to do with Jesus' Jesus' birth? Okay. Um, with Emperor Constantine, Conversion to Christianity, <laughs> many of these customs were later absorbed into Christmas celebrations. Okay. Um, one of the most famous, we'll get into Constantine here in a little bit, one of the most famous celebrations of the winter solstice in the world today takes place in the ancient ruins of Stonehenge, okay. England. Thousands of Druids and pagans gather there to chant, dance, and sing while waiting to see the the spectacular sunrise. These are pagan practices that are uh, all over the world. Remember, all false religions out there worship Satan. False Christianity, just flat out pagan, obviously pagan, like Druids, um, Buddha, all that stuff. Obviously pagan. It's all about Satan worship. He he gets people to worship the same holiday summer solstice as we just read it varies all over the world but it's, it's worshiped the same day they're worshiping satan on the same day all okay. right same time period let's see where oh we flipped over the page okay. this year the circle uh this year the circle sanctuary a prominent u.s pagan organization headed by Selena Fox. Don't know if this is how old, outdated this is. Um, could be headed by somebody else now. Um, we'll observe winter solstice eve with a celebration on Tuesday, December 20th, complete with guided meditation and candlelight rituals. Okay. So there's paganism. Like I said, it's, it's pretty much practice all over the world this summer solstice. And there's obvious, what I call obvious paganism. They don't claim anything to do with the Bible. They don't take the Bible and twist it. You know, good things. Someone said, uh, oftentimes uh, a bad thing is a good thing tw twisted. And I agree with that. Um, it's a great statement. But what I've also learned is oftentimes a lot of bad things are disguised as good things. Right? They're disguised. When you actually look in the Bible, it has nothing to do with the Bible. Yet they try to claim it's Christian. Right. It's not backed by Scripture. Um, now, one thing I wanted to make a point is, is we're talking about December 25th. We're going to get into it. Uh, I just wanted to get over the uh, start out with the summer solstice because that's one of the things we're going to come back to it a little bit as we go down. Because I'm looking at the three things. Because people say it's the birth of Christ, where it came out, why they celebrate the birth. Because we already looked in Scripture. Um, that time period where Jesus was actually born wasn't December. Okay, so we will talk about it because I'm not going to leave anything out to deceive you guys. I want to tell you guys everything I can. I'm not doing hardcore studies because I'm really not super good at it. But I also don't want to, there's a point where you can go too far on the studies. Okay, abstain from all appearance of evil. 
And one thing I didn't quote as we read through this, um, you're not to conform to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When you find out that a lot of the practices when it comes to Christmas aren't found in Scripture, and you say, well, we can Christianize it, what are you doing? You're conforming to the world. Okay? You cannot prove what is that good and perfect, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You can't when you conform to the world. Right. So we'll hit off. We'll start with the birth of Jesus. What did it really, why did they say December 25th is the birth of Jesus Christ? Now, I'm going to read this first and we'll get it because some people will say, well, no, no, we say it's the conception. That's not why December 25th was chosen because it's the conception of Jesus Christ. Right. But we'll get into that. Birth of Jesus. Christmas is celebrated to remember the birth of Jesus Christ, who Christians believe is the Son of God. Remember, uh, Chris, um, Christmas isn't found in the Bible. So I'm going off secular people because you can't find it in the Bible. Okay, I can't go to the Bible and say, this is what Christians stand for. True Bible-believing Christians stand for. It's not in the Bible. Okay. The name Christmas comes from Mass of Christ, or Jesus once again, there's people out there, people say it's Christ Mass. and that, What do you do with history? What do you do with absolute truth? Why can't you come out and just be honest and say, okay, Christmas means Christ Mass, the Mass of Christ. That's where the word came from. You have to break the word up when we did our definition of Christmas to get what Christmas is. Okay. It's a time of the year where they do a big Mass celebrating, it's supposed to be celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. But let's get into this real quick. And we're going to find out that's not what it is. But Christmas is now celebrated by people around the world, whether they are Christians or not. Let that sink in, brothers and sisters in Christ. That right there should be the biggest red flag. We're supposed to be set apart from the world. We're supposed to be separate. And yet the world as a whole loves Christmas. Okay. They try to bring Santa Claus into it, but there's a lot of people that they love celebrating Christmas. They know it's about the birth of Jesus Christ. They don't care much about the birth of Jesus Christ, but they love celebrating Christmas. Okay. That's a red flag. Okay. And we're going to get into it at the very end, because I want to remember this part. When we get to the very end, when you do, if we did things the right way, the Bible way, the world as a whole would hate Christmas. All right. You take all the fleshness out of it that they do for Christmas, people would hate it. The lost world, professing Christians who they just really wouldn't care much for it. All right. Next, a very early Christian tradition said, this is where they get to December 25th, said that the day when Mary was told that she would have a very special baby, Jesus called, because uh, it's based off Catholic, uh, called the Annunciation, was on March 25th. Okay? In other words, she conceived March 25th. And it's still celebrated today on the 25th of March by some people. Nine months after the 25th of March is the 25th of December. Okay. March 25th was also the day some early Christians thought the world had been made and also the day that Jesus died on when he was an adult. Okay. I don't know, it's, uh, Risen Sunday maybe? The day, there was a lot of things that people celebrate uh, when I was a false convert in these Bible buildings. The date of March 25th was chosen because people had calculated that was the day on which Jesus died as an adult says the 14th of Nisan in the Jewish calendar, and they thought that Jesus was born and had died on the same day of the year. Okay. See, that's going back to some people would say he, he was actually born, which that's probably more roughly right around that time period, because they're trying to say, we're getting into this, that they, he was conceived in December, but the reason we did it on December 25th wasn't because that's when he was conceived, not we, but the world, professing Christians, trying to bring it in, taking pagan religions and uh, 
Jesus stamp, I call it a Jesus stamp, and trying to Christianize it, was they're trying to say he was actually born around December. We know he's not according to scripture. Okay. Now, the name Christmas comes from the Mass of Christ. We talked about this in the Word Study, or Jesus. A mass, it's a Mass service, which is sometimes called Communion or Eucharist, is where Christians remember that Jesus died for us and then came back to life. Okay. The Christ Mass service was the only one that was allowed to take place after sunset. So that's what makes 25th so important and distinction when it comes, because part of me was like, they do the Catholic Mass all the time. What's so special about the 25th? I mean, what's so special? Well, it's the only time of the year that they were supposed to uh, do the Christ Mass service was only allowed to take place after sunset and before sunrise the next day. Now, I'm not saying that they practice that hardcore today, but you go back to the foundation when I talked about the law of first mention. Okay, in the Bible, I'll reiterate again, law of first mention. A word or a, a, stand, a subject will come up, mainly a word, and it will define it. Okay, This is the standard. This is what it is to help us know that that's the way it's supposed to be. So when the future, if someone perverts it, we go back to the beginning and say, okay, what was it about in the beginning? What's it supposed to be about? What's the definition of the word? Okay. So people had it at midnight because they don't do it at midnight, but they had it at midnight. So we get the name Christ Mass shortened to Christmas. Now remember the summer solstice, how it is sun worship. Okay. We talked about some, uh, we're going to get into a little bit more. The summer solstice is sun worship. Okay, it's going to, I hate jumping ahead, but you get so much, all this information, it's kind of hard to try to organize it too much. But um, the summer solstice, you're worshiping the birth of the sun god, the sun coming up. Okay, it's sun god worship, and the birth that's really being worshipped on the December 25th, law of first mention, is a sun god. Okay, it's sun worship. Um, so what's the Eucharist? They have that circle wafer, shape of a sun, and they show it rising up. And if you look behind them, oftentimes they have the big circle behind them and the crescent moon, I think, below it. Um, it's sun worship. So the 25th, there's a lot of sun worship going on in the pagan world. And like I said, Satan likes to change things. He disguises things to try to make things not look so bad. And he'll conform things to please who his audience is. That's a good way to say it. He's trying to please the audience. That's why it varies throughout the whole world. But when you break it down, it's sun worship and it's worshiping Satan. Right? But why do we get the so-called birth of Jesus Christ on December 25th? Because they're trying to say that March 25th, she was told that she was with child. Okay, I say with child because that's the Bible word. If you say pregnant, you can, you can try to justify abortion. If you say with child, you can't justify abortion. It's murder. Okay, so with child that she was conceived in March 25th, that's how they got the birth of Jesus Christ on December 25th to deceive people, to get them to worship and do the birth of Jesus Christ on December 25th. But whose birthday really is it on the December 25th? The sun God. All right. And we're going to get into that. So I, I wanted to tell you, that's what I found online because there's no other place, there's no other reason. Okay. Why are you celebrating someone's birthday on a day that's not his birthday? Okay, my birthday is on April 30th, so you know what? Let's celebrate my birthday on, at December 25th. That sounds good. Let's do it on December 25th. Why? Is there a hidden agenda? Oh, yeah. Big time hidden agenda. Okay. Now, we can go back in the date again. Okay, the first recorded date of Christmas being celebrated on December 25th was in 336. Okay. Now, when we did the study, the word study, I'm not contradicting myself. When it became like a national every year thing, everybody's commanded to do it. Nowadays, it's not a command, but back then when it first came out, it was a th over a thousand years after the birth of Jesus Christ. I didn't, I'm not saying that people didn't uh, observe it uh, before then. Okay. 
But the first recorded date of Christmas being celebrated on December 25th was in 336 um, AD, during the time of the Roman Emperor Constantine. Let that sink in. He was the first Christian Roman Emperor. I know he wasn't. Okay, he just took paganism. Okay, and then pretended it was Christian. He, he basically put a Jesus stamp on it. He twisted things and took things from the Bible and twisted them. Okay? And he was still worshiping uh, Satan, basically. But it was not an official Roman state festival at this time. Like I said, it wasn't until like a thousand years later. The Roman festival, not a thousand, a thousand years after Jesus' birth. So around, you know, 500 years later. Five to six hundred years later. My math's not always right, so over 600 years. All right. Um, the Roman festival of Saturnalia took place between December 17th and the 23rd and honored the Roman god Saturn. That's the pagan religion that Con I believe Constantine transferred over to Christmas back then. Right. Okay, Dias, Natalis, Solus, Invicti. I think it's Latin. It means birthday of the unconquering sun and was held on December 25th, a birthday. When the Roman thought the winter solstice took place, that's why it was done on the 25th. They thought the summer solstice took place then. Okay. And was the birthday of the pagan sun god Mithra and the pagan religion of Mithraism. The holy day was Sunday and and is where they get that word from. Okay. You can't get around this. It's sun worship. Now, what do we know about Constantine when it comes to so-called Christianity? They say he saw the cross. He has a vision of the cross. But when you actually look in the history, he saw an Ankh. Okay? An Egyptian Ankh. An Egyptian Ankh has a circle on top that comes down. And straight down and then the cross. Okay. It's not, he didn't see an actual cross like that Jesus was uh, crucified on. Okay. And what did Constantine do? He took pagan religions and hit and changed the names of the pagan gods, uh, uh, the, changed the pagan rituals. The Eucharist is based off sun worship and now he's trying to make it Christian. It's about the, uh, the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus. It's not. That's what we know about it. That's the origins of Christmas. They transferred over and said it went from celebrating the birth of Saturn, a sun god, to now we're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. So when you celebrate Jesus' birthday on the December 25th, you're celebrating it on the same day as a pagan god's birthday is. And you say, well, sometimes Satan can take something good and pervert it. I'd agree with you if, if God says in his Bible, December 25th is the day that Jesus was born. We know Jesus isn't born on December 25th. So when you celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ on December 25th, what do you really uh, celebrate? Oh, no, no, I'm celebrating the birth. Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. You can't, it's just, to me, it's excuses. When you start doing the study and truth starts sinking in, I have a love of truth. This book right here is my foundation on matters of faith and practice. And I hate being sarcastic. I wanted to be sarcastic about it because a lot of people will say that. They'll stand firm. It's my foundation on matters of faith and practice. And when you hit them up with Christmas and say, listen, it doesn't line up with the birth of Jesus Christ. It doesn't line up with absolute truth. Okay, well, except for Christmas. I, it's my foundation on matters of faith and practice, except for Christmas. I'll just throw it out the window for Christmas. And that's the attitude you get from some of these people. They have that attitude of, give me, no, I did the one about give me liberty or give me death. People misuse liberty because true liberty, if you want, when you're misusing it, it's the law of sin and death. Okay, if you don't want the true liberty, then you want death. Okay? If you don't want Jesus Christ. But people have that same attitude of, with Christmas, give me Christmas or give me death. Okay. Now I'm doing these videos, I'll reiterate again, I'm getting these videos out. After they're out, when people want to argue about Christmas, I'll just point back to these videos. I'm not going to keep hammering everybody all the time. People can go overboard. 
Okay? Here's truth. What do you want to do with it? You want to throw it out? It's on you. It's between you and God. It's not a salvation issue, but it's a sanctification issue. Okay? It's a, can you give God glory on December 25th, uh, celebrating his birthday on December 25th? As we're going through this, we're realizing, not really. Now, if the pagan holiday uh, uh, um, wasn't on that day and you wanted to read and, and give God thanks for his birth and do a study, I'm all for it. I'm not against sitting down and doing a Bible study or reading out loud while everybody, someone's reading it out loud and everybody's listening to the story of Jesus Christ. I mean, today everybody's got a Bible, but in the past, very few people had Bible and the Word of God and it was spoken and people liked to hear it. So you would tell stories over and over that are in the Bible all the time. So it wasn't just one time of the year. Please, don't ever take the fact that you have God's perfect written word in your hands. Okay? It's, it's precious. It's your most prized physical possession on this earth. So, right there we see that we have Catholic Church sun worship is done on 25th. And the whole point about that's special about 25th is it can be done after dark. You're not supposed to do the Eucharist after dark. But it can be on December 25th. Um, we see about Constantine, how he changed and basically made his worshiping Saturn a false god, the sun god, a birth of the sun god to worshiping baby Jesus, the birth of Jesus, an antichrist Jesus that's really the Saturn. They just changed the name so they could hide it and claim to be Christian. Okay. Some people also think that December 25th might have also been chosen because the winter solstice and the ancient pagan Roman midwinter festival called Saturnalia and uh, Dias Natalis, Solus and Victi, because we learned that that means um, uh, I lost my place. I want to basically the birth of the sun god. That's what we read. I lost my place. can't find it. But uh, um took place in December around this date, so it was time when people already celebrated things. It was a celebration that was already going on around the world. We learned about, we read about the solstice, different versions of it all over the world. The winter solstice is celebrated by many people around the world as the beginning of the return of the sun and darkness turning into light. Let's see. Uh, he put it in there, I don't know if this is true, but it says the Talmud recognizes the winter solstice. I, I don't know much about the Talmud. I'm not one of those Christians that done a study on it to rebuke it and whatnot. Okay. Now, most of the professing Christian world are... I always put this down. Most of the professing Christian world are Catholics outwardly or inwardly. Okay. Uh, what they call closet Catholics. Okay. What I mean by that is we just read the two main things that we're going to, I'm just going to summarize it here in a second. Sun worship, God worship, uh, false God worship, lowercase g God worship. And with the Catholic Church has mushed mush that all together and tried to make it look Christian. But a lot of these Babel buildings, they have Catholic practices. Um, they use Catholic Bibles. Um, Baptists are starting to turn from the King James Bible and starting to introduce Bible perversions. Uh, but all the Methodists, Presbyterian, non-denominational, Anglican, I, I know I'm missing some of them out there, uh, Lutheran, you can even go um, Jehovah's Witness, their Bible is a Catholic Bible and when you show them truth, they don't want the truth. Okay? And some of their practices. Uh, Mormons, same way, uh, some of their practices, um, it's all Catholic. The, uh, as we get closer and closer to the last day, the catching away of the body of Christ, uh, you have the Bible talks about in Revelation, you have the mother and her daughters. Okay, Harlots, you have the whore of Babylon, the Catholic Church that's openly Catholic, outwardly, and you have the daughters, the whores, uh, um, the harlots, mother of harlots. It talks about those are the Catholics that are inwardly outwardly they're not hardcore I'm Catholic but their practices line up and you'll see that that's what we're talking about here so um, 
Another part that they're talking about, like I said, I just want to talk about everything. Uh, the Jewish, not everything, but what I could find, because someone might find something I didn't. I didn't want to spend a lot of time in this because I don't want to get lost into overly studying pagan things. Okay, I don't want to know exactly how this, the worship was going on and how it was done in the sense that we'll talk about some of the pagan practices, but ultimately you don't have to do all that study. When we get to the Bible and we go through the birth of Jesus Christ, all you have to say is, is where's that, where's it at in Scripture? Oh, you're supposed to do this on the birth of Jesus Christ, on Jesus' birthday celebration. Or you can do that. Where's it at in Scripture? That's all you have to say, and you'll know, I'm not supposed to do that, and I'm not going to do that. It probably has pagan ties. You know, 99.999% of the time, it's got pagan ties, because it's not based in Scripture. All right. But the Jewish Festival of Lights, Hanukkah, starts on the 25th of Kislev, the month in the Jewish calendar that occurs about the same time as December. Hanukkah celebrates when the Jewish people were able to rededicate and worship in their temple in Jerusalem, um, again following many years of not being allowed to practice their religion. Okay, Jesus was a Jew. Yes, he was. Some people, some people think uh, don't can't like the replacement theology people, who say that you know Christians have replaced Israel. Don't seem to understand Jesus was a Jew. So this could be another reason that helps the early church choose December the 25th for the date of Christmas. It was another thing that was in there. I wanted to throw that out. Okay. But let's just summarize everything we've gone through. Okay. After this study, I believe that it is both the summer solstice and the Catholic Mass combined. Okay. Bottom line is sun worship. Why was it chosen December 25th? It's sun worship. Why would you celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ when he wasn't born that day on the same day that they're celebrating the birth of a sun god, paganism? I mean, when it just boils down to it, why? And we'll get into that. A big thing that appeals to people is the flesh. Satan does that. He'll grab things and make it very fleshly. You've got food. You've got candles. Remember, candles and wreaths are big things for this, uh, uh, the way the Germans would celebrate the uh, summer, summer solstice and winter solstice. Uh, you got the Christmas tree. You got gift giving. You got candy. You got lights. You know, all these festive lights. What is that? That's all flesh. Okay. You strip that all the way. And it has no, and you don't, I mean, let's say that it wasn't even there. You don't even have that in your mind and everything. You'd stop and go, why am I celebrating the birth of Jesus on December 25th? He wasn't even born then. There's a pagan holiday on these, in the same day, in the same time period. Satan has deceived the world and got the world as a whole to worship him big time during the month of December. All right. To me, I mean, I'm sorry, I just... When I did the study, I was shocked when it, I, I got down. It's like, wow, that's how 20, December 25th was chosen. You mean it's, the, it's, it's a birthday? It's absolutely a birthday, but it's not Jesus' birthday. Okay. So it's basically sun worship. Birth of the sun god who overpowers the darkness. Now for us, brothers and sisters in Christ, who's the light of the world? Jesus Christ. There it is. John 8, 16, uh, 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Who's the light of the world? Jesus Christ. Who overcame the law of sin and death? Overcame darkness, so you don't walk in darkness, you get to walk in light. Jesus Christ. So why are you worshiping a sun god? I'm not worshiping a sun. Yes, you are. You can't get around it. Yes, you are. Jesus is not born on December 25th. Okay? What are you worshiping? The sun god. Now, remember, the Bible says, um, for instruction and righteousness purposes, um, at this, this ignorance, let's look it up again. Uh, 
There it is. Acts 17.30 And these times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commendeth all men everywhere to repent. For instruction righteousness, brothers and sisters in Christ, I was ignorant of this. Mm -hmm. Now I already explained in my opening why I don't really celebrate uh, birthdays that much. Uh, I'm not birthday, uh, holidays that much. I kind of, when I joined the military, I moved away from family. And like I said, the military, I still kind of celebrated a little bit here and there. But their thing is, it's a big party time, drinking, and just having a good time, worldly music. And at that time, I was a professing Christian and was kind of into some of that stuff. Okay? Um, I understand that part. But even then, I didn't understand this. <laughs> I've never done the study. I, I was a PWC, Polly won a cracker. Someone said it was Christian. It must be Christian. It appeals to my flesh. I'm just going to go with what somebody else says. And this ignorance, when you don't know better, God's not going to hold you accountable. But just as we read, Jesus is the light of the world. He's not going to leave you in darkness. He's going to open a door and say, do you want to know the truth? Okay. Do you want to know the truth? And when he shows you the truth, now you're held accountable to it. Okay? I believe a lot of people that make videos and stand hardcore for Christmas and ignore absolute truth, they're going to be answering for it at the judgment seat of Christ, big time. Okay? That's a lot of work that's going to get burnt up. So, um, and like I said, I, I said a door. God opens a door and says, do you want to know the truth? So what did God say to people that don't want to know the truth? Um, Oops. Let's hope I'm doing this right. Ah, I can't fan, fi find it. The verse that talks about if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant still, and I hope I'm saying it right, okay? Uh, ignorance is not an excuse. You stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You can't tell God, I didn't know any better. God will be like, you could have. It was right there. You could have typed it up and done a study like I did. There's videos out there showing truth. You can't go and claim ignorance. Okay. Basically, it's sun worship. Okay. I talked about the study of high places versus church buildings. Once again, how does uh, Satan appeal to people and get people to worship uh, him or get them to do something so God will have to punish you? Okay. He appeals to the flesh. He makes it a flesh thing. Okay. What's the biggest thing about Christmas that people love? I'm being honest. If you're honest and you look at the world, remember the world as a whole loves Christmas and they understand it's supposed to be about Jesus' birth. And they'll try to say, well, it's also about Santa Claus and we'll try to avoid the Jesus' birth part and Santa Claus. But they understand and know that Christmas was originally about the birth of Jesus Christ. They might not like it. But what's the biggest thing that appeals to people? It's food and entertainment. It's a flesh holiday. Okay. Uh, that got them to turn from the commandment of God. Um, what was it? Uh, what I was talking about, how he, he got them to keep, the commandment of God was to, uh, animal sacrifices were supposed to be done in the temple by the Levitical priesthood. And he got, he built high places, that one king, he had appointed his own priesthood. I mean, where do we get that today? Catholic Church. Um, they weren't the Levitical. They weren't appointed by God. Okay? And he got them to do it by feast, uh, food, and entertainment. How does, uh, why do Christians love and Satan gets so-called professing Christians and even real Christians? Okay, They're, Just because you celebrate Christmas doesn't mean you're lost. I'm not saying that. Okay, I'm not one of those people that says you celebrate Christmas. I'm not going to watch your. I'm not going to support your ministry or watch your ministry. Uh, you're lost and on your way to hell. No. Okay, but how does he get you to do it? He appeals to the flesh. Okay, food and entertainment. Now, a question. We're getting. To, we're going to wrap this up. A question I want to leave with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay. Now. If all 
the food and entertainment basically, the gift giving, the food, party time, all the things that are done on Christmas that aren't backed by scripture, just traditions of men, the lights, the Christmas tree, the candles, the wreaths, the candy, you know, if all that was taken away, just, okay, it's gone. I mean, I'm just saying it's gone. I'm not, God can take it and just make it disappear, basically. You can't do it. It's outlawed. It has nothing to do with Christmas. And all it was is you sitting down and reading the Bible and praying and giving God thanks together as the body of Christ for the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, Jesus coming into the world in the likeness of sinful flesh. Uh, you think the world as a whole would love it? You think a lot of professing Christians would just go crazy and nuts over Christmas? That's something to think about, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a big thing to think about. What's going on in these pagan things? It's entertainment. They put on a big show. The big procession when it comes to the Eucharist and everything. Uh, the uh, Catholic Mass. Uh, the summer solstice. Uh, celebrating Saturn. <laughs> you know, the sun god. If all the fleshness that makes it about me, and I'm jumping the gun because that's what we're going to get into the study about the Christmas tree and the gifts and some of the practices, it makes it all about you. If it's not all about me and my flesh and you take all that out of there, would the world as a whole love Christmas? So, just some... Uh, some information on why December 25th, when I did the study on it, okay? Bottom line, the more and more I study this, uh, the origins and foundation of December 25th, the month of December, is pagan. Trying to take something that's pagan and Christianize it and make it like, well, it's Christian now, Christians can do it, it's okay, you can do it. And you tell them, where is sun god worship okay? For Christians, okay. where's Jesus' birth in December? And we talked about it. People are getting so desperate, they'll switch it around and say, well, maybe Jesus was conceived in December. Remember how we read up there about um, how March, I think it was March 25th, nine months later is December 25th. They're being honest. December 25th is Jesus' birthday, and March 25th is the conception. But you'll get people that are so desperate to hold on to that flesh holiday that they're saying um, that maybe Jesus was conceived in December. I can't remember if I mentioned this part. It just came to me. That they'll say Jesus was conceived in December. He might have been conceived in December. And, and it's like, yeah, it's, I don't want to do that. Um, but you just want to hit your head going, uh, are we celebrating the conception of Jesus Christ? Are you celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ? You can't do both. He wasn't conceived and born on the same day. All right. I'm sorry, I just got to do that because it's like, I can't believe people would get so desperate to say that. To, 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 to uh, justify their flesh holiday. But like I said, you take all that away, all the fleshness away, would people be coming out with excuse after excuse after excuse? They wouldn't. They'd be like, well... I guess I can do this any time of the, of the year, you know. Do a study on Jesus' birth. I can remember Jesus' birth multiple times throughout the year and thank him for coming to this world in likeness of sinful flesh and being and for sin, con condemning sin in the flesh, you know, becoming sin who knew no sin. Um, yeah, you know, people wouldn't be defending doing it hardcore on December 25th, the month of December, when you take all the flesh stuff out. So we're going to end it right there. I thank you for watching. Uh, we're going to move into the next part, um, mainly the practices that go on. We're going to, mainly we're going to be talking about the Christmas tree and gift giving and stuff like that because I've already had someone make a comment under my uh, opening video. I give a gift to my son. It's not a big deal. We're going to get into it. Okay. I pray that you, he that answereth the matter before he heareth it is folly and shame unto him. Okay. So we're going to get into that next, and that one I'm, I'm going to start enjoying. I'm not really enjoying these studies. I'm learning stuff, but my favorite studies is where I can use lots of Scripture. And that one I can do Scripture. And some of the next few ones that we're going to be going through, we're, I'm going to be able to go do a lot of Scripture. We'll be able to turn to the Bible a lot. This I couldn't because it's not in the Bible. Okay. Um, 
the pagan worship is probably in the Bible in the Old Testament, and they just change it and change it and change it uh, till today. It's uh, basically the same worship as Babylon. Everything goes back to Babylon, um, mystery Babylon. <laughs> So, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.